Hi, this is Gordon with Maximum PC Magazine. We are going to get the world's first look at a UEFI BIOS running Intel's new Sandy Bridge CPU. JJ from Asus is here to show us this running on a P8 P67 Pro board. And we also have a second uh, Maximus uh, 4 Extreme board we're also going to check out later, which is really even more kick ass. But check out this. This is unlike any BIOS you've ever seen before. Yeah, um, definitely we've spent quite a bit of time. This probably this BIOS development has been somewhere between 12 to 16 months uh, in our internal design team. We actually started in H55, um, the first initial design development behind EFI, um, knowing that you know people were going to be looking to have support for a high capacity storage, you know, 2.2 terabyte plus. Sure. Um, but as well as, you know, people have had a lot of interest about going to that next level in terms of having something that looks nicer, maybe has more vers versatility in terms of the overall layout, um, and also capacity. We were starting to reach a size limitation on previous generation BIOS builds, 8, 16 meg. Sure. So we've opened up the envelope in terms of more space. But really what you're seeing here is the big thing, uh, a, a complete visual overhaul. Um, this initial screen that you're seeing right here is called our easy mode interface. So the first thing we want to kind of do is give people a system summary screen. So you can see here, you can easily see the name of the board, the BIOS revision, the CPU, as you see, we're running a 2600K part. It's running stock. We've got the system memory, DDR frequency is denoted, and then we have these nice full real-time um, measurement parameters. So temperature, voltage, fan speed. And if we were to go ahead and, of course, add these items dynamically real-time, they'll get adjusted here and we're good to go. Um, another piece of feedback that we've also had is, as you can see here, in this area, this is um, our power management options. Hmm. We've uh, had EPU for quite a long time, but it's right. always been, while hardware-based, only controllable in the operating system. Um, because of the developments that we've had with our, our digital VRM and our new EPU design, we can now control it directly from a hardware stage. So you can just go in here, you can click onto it, and it'll dynamically switch everything for you. This uh, controls maybe the maximum phase range, uh, the voltage areas, um, even on power saving, actually, you can complete undervolting to the CPU. So for people that are really looking for a lot of control, they can do that. Or we can go to higher level performance where it can maybe overclock the CPU a little, little bit. Uh, one of the cool parts here is this is boot priority. A lot of people sometimes are adding different types of boot devices, whether it's external, maybe eSATA, a USB 3 boot drive, uh, an additional hard disk, whatever it might be. Now, real time, you can go ahead and actually click on the device. And once you've clicked on it, I can go ahead and actually dynamically change it. Wow. So um, really accessible. We want to give you kind of a good level of control here, um, but without maybe overwhelming the user. But I'm a diehard guy. I like you, Gordon, right? right? You guys want the kind of the nitty, the gritty. Yeah, I want to know how do you dig into this book, into this bio, sir? The bio, so of course, we can maintain using the mouse. So we can go here to exit, and we can go to the advanced mode, or we can also do it through the keyboard. And when we go to the advanced mode, we're going to go to our new BIOS layout here. Uh, so our first main screen is, of course, kind of like the similar easy mode where we're just getting a system overview. Um, this is really the, kind of the exciting part, the AI tweaker. This is what we're really known for. We're giving you a lot of different options here. So uh, if we go ahead and go into manual mode, which is how we're going to enable most of the overclocking, you can see once we go there, we've got B clock. Um, what, as we discussed in your previous video, B clocking isn't really adjustable to a high degree. So we're not going to really adjust it. But what we now have available is turbo ratios. Okay. All overclocking on K parts are based in turbo. So we give you two options. You can do all the adjustment real time in the operating system via our AI Suite 2 application, or you can do it here hardware level directly in the BIOS. And exclusive to us, we have actually independent core turbo multiplier control. So you can go ahead and let's say I want 4.8 gigahertz, which is doable on Sandy Bridge. We can go ahead and set our multiplier there. Bam, and that's it. that's it. And you can see right there, we've made it really easy for the user. We have a target frequency for the, the actual turbo mode. Sure. And as you can see, it's now denoted 4.8 gigahertz. So really flexible, really easy. Uh, we still give a lot of users control over memory for those guys that want to be able to run an asynchronous memory divider. You can see we've qualified already all the way up to 2400 in terms of the speed. So not, a, not an issue for really anybody. Um, EPU settings, the same thing you saw in the easy mode, we're going to allow you to adjust that. Uh, we maintain our OC tuner, which we introduced in P55, which is just a quick hardware level auto overclocking sure. algorithm. Just click it, you could overclock your system. Um, here, this is really, we're kind of, we're offering a, an unprecedented level of controls for the VRM. Because we're using a digital VRM, we have extremely advanced load line calibration options. So, you know, when guys are overclocking, you need to compensate for voltage drops. We give you a five-stage LLC level, 
which is pretty impressive. So you can really make it really tight, you can control the overshoot, the undershoot, do whatever you want. And Are you also, mm -hmm. I'm noticing, because you, uh, there's a lot more information on, on different settings. Like yeah, we, we spent quite a bit of time. We got a lot of feedback from people that sometimes, you know, they, uh, they jump into the BIOS and they just wouldn't know what, what this setting did. Right. You know, and they'd spend all their time like on Google or Bing trying to find, well, what is VRM switching frequency or what does load line calibration do? So they spent a lot of time actually putting usable information as to what this option does for you. But at the same time, uh, both on part for the K part and a lot of the BIOS work we've done, it's really easy. You can probably leave most of this board in auto mode. Right. Define maybe your voltage, define your multiplier, and be sure. rocking and rolling. People like to be able to tweak things, or at least be able to see they like see they're able to tweak things, though, right? So yeah, yeah, and and definitely like I said, tweaking is is unprecedented. I mean, VRM frequency we can manually set the driving frequency for the VRM, um, the phase count we can adjust that to a really high level before we could only dynamically switch between one stage and a high stage. And for people who don't know what phase count is, that's... That's um, essentially on, on your board, you have your, your choke, your driver, and your MOSFET. This is part of what's called your VRM, the voltage regulation area. So this is what drives power to the CPU. And we're giving you essentially control to condition how you want to drive power. If you're a stock user, maybe you want to run more effectively, maybe not produce as much heat, keep the voltage low, uh, keep power consumption more minimal, right? But if I'm trying to do 4, 8, 4, 9, 5 gigahertz, right, I probably want to use as much of that VRM to make sure I have clean, stable power. So we're giving you that as an option to make those adjustments. Um, so it's, it's really unprecedented. I mean, we've got a special controller here on the board that can actually even adjust the, uh, the phase banks based on temperature or on current. So depending on how you're driving the system, maybe in an open test bed where the temperatures, um, uh, you can't guarantee how they're going to go. You'd rather drive it on current. And if you're in a high airflow environment, you'd rather do it on temperature. So you got a lot of flexibility. Right? Okay. And really granularity, one of the impressive things is take a look at what we can do with the voltage here. So if let's say I were to go ahead and put 1.4, right? Well, I can go really tight. I can go ahead and bump up by very small increments because of that digital VRM we can go very precise, very finite. So it makes it really easy for the user to kind of get the most control that they want when they're working sure. with the BIOS. Now obviously, all overclocking is different in every CPU, but what, what are you seeing to get to 4.8 with the, with the Sandy Bridge? Are you really having to add a lot of voltage to the processor? Um, not too much, actually. In, in most situations for sustained heavy load, um, we can do 4.8, 4.9 at probably about 1.4, 1.425 in terms of the V-Core. Okay. So it's pretty reasonable and while that might be uh, seem like a little high, oh, remember it's on 32 nanometer. So the 32 nanometer, even under load, our CPU with like a, this Hyper 212 Plus, it's about 70 C. So actually it's really, really nice temperatures hmm. for the clock speeds that you're running at. Yeah, another question about the overclocking. If hmm. you are pushing to 4.8, uh, say if I were to push a Clarkdale to 4.8 or something and it blew up, I just yeah. would get a hard lock. Because this is a turbo overclock, is it more stable? I mean, does it just simply crank the clocks back or do you still get a hard lock? It's actually, uh, might take a little bit of users taking, a, taking time to adjust to how the overclock works because when you get into Windows, uh, like on X58 or P55, if let's say you turned off your C1E, your C6, all that stuff, right. you were always locked in at 4.2 gigahertz, so you kind of knew that you always wanted this fixed voltage. Right. But now because it's tied into turbo, you get this drop down and you'll be like at 1600 in your desktop and the voltage will drop down all the way too. So you kind of kind of play with it a little bit to see where the adjustment range is. So it, it takes a little bit getting used to, um, but you get kind of best of both worlds. You get those really high clock speeds, but you still get really nice idle temperatures and less power consumption and, and lower voltages that you're continually having to supply to the board. Cool. Yeah. Um, keeping kind of with the rest of the board here, you know, most of the standard stuff is there, you know, uh, in terms of the layout. We give you a really nice kind of real-time overview of the uh, hard drive options in terms of you can enable hot plugging, ACHI, RAID, and whatnot. Uh, monitor mode, we're really happy about this. We got a lot of high-level fan controls here. You know, you can go in and get really advanced and you can go to manual mode and define upper temperature, fan maximum, lower temperature, really get really specific as far as things those those things go and then kind of sort stuff that most people expect from us which is like an OC profile where they can store sure. you know their overclock parameters to find them and, and be good to go so it is different um, allows more flexibility it's got more space allows us more granularity but it still has we didn't want to throw everybody for a hundred percent curve right we wanted sure. to keep it friendly enough where you knew what you're doing 
um, but while still giving you new stuff that you hadn't seen before. How do you do a BIOS update? Is it just like the old days? You yeah, yeah. It's definitely uh, quite easy. All you would, you would do is uh, just go into the Easy Flash utility, and from there, it'll enter into this interface here, and plug in my flash drive. From there, select the version. You can see there at the very top, it gives me my version number. If I had a newer BIOS, I'd pop it there at the bottom. It showed me that, asked me to update. That's it. It's good to cool. go. So very easy to work with. It's uh, not a complicated process, and and the overclocking, like I said, it's it's exciting and it's really easy to work with. But only with K parts. So. Yes, only with K parts. That's that's uh, a requirement. Whether it's 2500K or 2600K, but said so the flexibility of being able to you know pretty much go here. Put in four nine maybe, and this is a stock three four part three point four gigahertz. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe make our memory sixteen hundred. We're not going to go ahead any load line and uh, voltage. We can just do one point five and uh, see if we can go ahead and uh, see just because we're going a little bit more aggressive on the frequency. We're going to go ahead and uh, just a couple of variables. We're going to turn off our C states because sometimes those, as you know, restrict us from getting to some higher clock speeds. We're still going to have a uh, speed step. So we're still gonna get drop down, we're still gonna get power efficiency, but we just wanna go ahead and make sure that we're not limiting our ability to scale up. And a reboot, and that's it. Should repost and be 4.9, so really wow. easy overclocking with the board, really easy overclocking with the K-part. Nice, some cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the first board we're gonna look at. We're also gonna look at the BIOS on the uh, uh, ex uh, Extreme board in a few seconds, but anyway, that'll be the next video. This is Gordon Young with Maximum PC. Talk to you later.